Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Build It series. This is the second video in which we're talking about the welcome window, and today we're going to be talking about how we can implement the left side of this welcome to Xcode window that you see here. So some of the little details that are here, um, a lot of this stuff up here, pretty standard. The button in the top left is a little not standard, and uh, we'd have to implement some kind of way so that when we hover over the button that the image type is going to change. So we'll talk about how we can implement such a thing. Um, then at the, uh, you'll notice that if you leave the view and come back, uh, the buttons at the top left and the bottom here, they disappear. They also disappear slightly differently depending on when you're entering or exiting. So when you enter it, they show up immediately. When you exit, they actually animate away with a slight animation. Um, the probably the most tricky part of this entire view here is really around these buttons. And there's probably multiple ways in which you can implement these. But the thing that makes it tricky is just that the sort of layout of these multi labels um, is well, a <laughs> there are uh, multiple different fonts, and then there are multiple lines. And um, it, it's just slightly different or slightly complex for AppKit to say the least. Um, the other thing is that it is an entire button. It is not just a button where the image is. So I can click on either the image, I can click on the text, I can even click way over on the right side here. Um, and you'll note that actually the left side is not clickable, but basically the button spans all the way from here to the edge of the view over here. And so we do need a way of having this entire clickable area where we could click that and trigger the action. So that's uh, the trickiest part probably of this, this whole window or this whole view. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into how we can create some of this stuff. So we're going to go in our main welcome view controller. I'm going to delete the preferred content size because we're going to be kind of defining that content size as we go. There's also a few things I've gone ahead and added just so I don't have to recreate them here with you. There is a close hover icon that I've uh, put up. And if you need to find this asset, you can find it on the Git repo that's in the description below. But you can also make your own. It's it's pretty straightforward. Um, anyway, there's a close hover icon. There's a close icon, which is just going to be for the hover or not hover states of the button. And then lastly, there's just an image to represent the uh, application. And in this case, it's just uh, matching what Xcode has. All right, let's go back into our main welcome view controller and set some of this stuff up. So. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of in the top left. So we have this button here and I'm going to change it so that it is a hover button, which is our class that um, I'm going to use to actually implement a hovering button. And I've gone ahead and added this in. I'm going to run through this quickly just because I don't want to spend all time trying to uh, discuss each one of these things. But basically AppKit doesn't really have a standard way of uh, using a hover and I wish there was a, a button style for doing this kind of thing but unfortunately there's not and uh, the way we can implement this though is pretty straightforward we're gonna have two different properties for different NS images one for the hovering image one for the not hovering image and uh, basically on the not hovering image I'm just gonna always set this to be the standard image and again the style is basically determining whether the image or the alternate image properties on NS button are going to be used but the way I'm going to set this up is just I'm always going to set the image property. I'm not going to worry about the alternate image property because it doesn't really help me in this case. I'm just going to use uh, a standard image all the time. All right, so the not hovering image will set the image. And then basically we have this uh, tracking area that we're adding. We add it so that it happens on mouse entered and exited. It'll always be active regardless of where the window is and then it's always going to be tracking in the visible rectangle, so I don't always have to be updating the bounds anytime uh, we have a bounds update, and we would do this normally in update tracking areas, which we could totally do here. We don't have to implement it this way, um, but this way is a little bit nice in that we don't actually have to keep track of this particular tracking area. All right, with that, uh, the last thing, of course, is when we enter, we're gonna set the hovering image to the image, and when we, uh, leave we're going to just set the uh, not hovering image and i don't actually need to call super here that was um, something else all right so there we go uh, let's go ahead and go back to our main welcome uh, view controller so we can set this hover button up so i'm going to select it we've already changed the class to be a hover button and the hovering image is going to be our close hover the not hovering image is going to be the close button it is a style of we're going to change it to the square 
because uh, I don't want um, that style. Then I'm gonna just remove the border on this and then I'm going to delete the text, which is button by default. Um, unfortunately, even though we have these uh, IB designable property things, it doesn't really update the image uh, on this button. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and actually set the image property directly. This is not really required, but it is just helpful so that you can visualize what it looks like. All right, now I'm going to pin these to the top left and the top right. I'm gonna use a spacing of 12 to the top and the, the left or the leading side. And now we can see we have this nice little button over here on the left. All right, let's go ahead and add that big Xcode image that's on the, the middle here. So I'm gonna drag in an image view and we're just gonna stretch this out a bit. Um, some of the constraints that I want on this guy, uh, I'm going to set it so that the width and the height are going to be 128 points. And the distance from the top, I'm going to set it to be 40. And we'll go ahead and set that. And then we want this to be horizontally aligned. All right, and now we just need to set the image and we're gonna take that Xcode image that I showed you earlier to fill that in there. All right, let's go down to the label now. So I'm gonna search for, oops, search for a label. And we're gonna drag this guy in here. I'm just gonna sit it right at the bottom of where the image view is. Uh, there's a few things we wanna change. First off, the uh, system regular size, I actually want the font size to be 38. So we'll change that to be 38. Let's realign this label just so it's where I want it to be. We're gonna horizontally align it in the container. And then I just want it to be right from the same distance. Uh, I think it should be just zero along, uh, matching where the image view is there. And then um, that should be it for the label. And we can go ahead and just change the text to be uh, welcome to Xcode, like so. All right, the next little label below it, and uh, let me just reference back to our welcome window here so you can see what I'm trying to follow along with. So we've gone ahead and done the, these few components here. Next up is this version uh, 12.4. We can see that the font is of a different font color. It's gonna actually be the secondary font uh, label color that, X, or that uh, AppKit gives us. So let's go ahead and uh, put this guy in here. The constraints, I'm gonna just do standard, and then we're gonna horizontally align it. All right, the label is going to be uh, version 12.4, 12D. For e, And then uh, we want to change the text color on here so that we have the secondary label color. And that should match what Xcode gives us for its coloring over here. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add in a stack view. Actually, let's just go ahead and search for a button. So um, this is going to be the button that we're going to try and use to represent the buttons here, here, and here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and design one of them and then we can copy it a couple of times. So the style um, is just going to be, uh, I'm gonna make it square again. I don't want it to be bordered. And then the image, we want the image position to be on the leading side. So we're gonna set that as well. And then uh, the image I'm going to take is going to be of, um, it's gonna actually be, well, <laughs> there's different ways we could do this. Um, I'm just going to kind of cheat a little bit and just use an SF symbol. I don't actually like the way this turns out because SF, SF symbols are dependent on the font size for their uh, sort of appearance and the, the boundary uh, isn't really suited for leading aligning in an NS button. But I'm just going to use it because it makes it uh, somewhat simple to do. All right, so if I want to search for this, uh, I want plus uh, square and that's this guy here. So the font is really determining uh, what this appearance is going to look like. And so if I boost the font size, we can see that the image asset is going to be boosted along with it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit just done on that. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this button title. We're gonna stretch this button so that it fits all the way over here. Um, and then I'm just going to do a few things. So let's go back to this uh, button again. 
The tint color is going to be dependent on the accent color of the system, so we want to set that to be the accent color. And uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we want to do. Um, I guess alignment should be left aligned, although I don't know if that's going to matter uh, when I set it up uh, in a bit, because I'm actually going to be using uh, attributed strings to set up this text later on. All right. Um, anyway, that's kind of the setup for setting up one of these buttons. Let's go ahead and we're just going to duplicate it. And I'm just going to hold down the option key and drag one of them out and then drag another one out. All right. And from here, I'm actually just going to select all of them and I'm going to embed them into a stack view. So we can go into this bottom right button here and just hit stack view. And ta-da, we have a stack view. All right, I guess I actually have to reset this up now that I've embedded them all in a stack view. So we want it zero to that side. We want it to be 50 to this side. Uh, I want it to be 35 from the label above it. And then I will leave it as such. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Delete that. Go from here to here. Vertical spacing. All right, let's change it so that this is going to be 35, um, or it's uh, 40 that I have from the top. And let's update that so that we have a, a properly spaced out thing here. All right, so now we have three different buttons in a stack view. Uh, I'm going to change the spacing just a little bit here. Uh, I have the spacing at 12. And then uh, the last thing we want to do is add that checkbox. So let's go ahead and find a checkbox. And I'm going to uh, let's just pin it to the bottom actually. So uh, we'll do um, do 50. And I think the way that I kind of found it looks okay, at least with these assets, is to put it at 53. Kind of arbitrary, but um, that's kind of how I did it. Um, and then this top constraint should be 35. And uh, let's go ahead and set that. All right, so there we go. We have our checkbox. We want to change the checkbox text to be matching what we had in Xcode. So it says, uh, show this window when Xcode launches. So let's change that. Show this window when Xcode launches. Ta-da. And now we have our, our, our setup there. All right. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, let's go ahead and relaunch the application just to see what our layout is going to be here. So as we can see, it looks pretty good. It actually almost looks exactly like what we want. Uh, if I hover over this button, we can see that the, the button switches between uh, the states that we want. Obviously, we haven't really set up these buttons yet, and we also haven't set up the, uh, the checkbox and the button at the top to disappear and appear when we mouse away and or exit and, and enter. So let's go ahead and implement those, and to do that, we're going to have to start writing some code. So uh, let's hop over to our main welcome view controller here, and I'm going to set up a few different things. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our assistant editor. Uh, I'll have to click on the main welcome view to do this correctly. All right, so I'm going to just set up a few different properties so that we can go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and add a close button. All right, and then we're going to add a checkbox. Uh, we're going to call this uh, show on launch checkbox. All right. And now that we have those two things, uh, let's go ahead and add a few more. Um, I'm going to manually set up these buttons so that um, they're going to be basically just outlets on the, the welcome window. This is probably not the best way to do it. We'd probably want a little bit more of a dynamic approach so that I could just say, um, you know, if I only wanted two buttons to show up, or maybe I want four buttons, right? We'd want maybe a more dynamic approach. But for now, I'm just going to manually uh, make outlets for each one of them. It just makes this tutorial a little bit easier. All right, so let's do, we'll just call it first button. We'll make this one second button. And then this one will be third button. All right, so now that we've made all of our outlets like that, there's a few more things we want to do. We want the ability to have an action from our uh, close button up here. So let's go ahead and send this over here. 
and this is going to be close window will be the action and then we'll make uh, I'm actually gonna save this checkbox for a later time I'm not going to implement how we would uh, choose whether or not to appear, uh, show this window just yet so we'll save that action for another period all right now that we have uh, all the actions and stuff set up let's just go to our main welcome window drop this uh, assistant pane here so that we have a little more room to work with so when we want to close the button or close the window rather uh, when we press the button we simply want to say uh, view.window.close that's all we want to do all right um, now the part comes where we want to set up uh, the buttons. So the way I'm going to define this is I'm going to define basically the struct that's going to define what a um, the title and the subtitle will be for the text, and then we'll kind of go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and just set up the struct that's going to represent a button, and the the button is going to have both this title string and a subtitle string. And what I'm trying to model here is I'm trying to model the basically this title and then this subtitle of the button. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and just create a, a model that represents what these buttons are. And then we're just going to fill out the all the buttons the same way, just using basically this array of uh, buttons that we have. All right. Uh, I'm just going to kind of skip through and uh, write all these buttons out. And then we'll come back later in the tutorial to talk about actually constructing these on the NS buttons themselves. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and just put out those models, basically copying what the welcome to Xcode window has, how can we actually set these up correctly on these buttons? Um, it's a little weird in that uh, the spacing is hard to control unless we're manually drawing how the text is going to appear in the buttons. Um, but one way that we can kind of avoid this problem is to actually just use an attributed string and put the spacing in ourselves. I know this is um, maybe some of the purists out there are going to think that this is wrong, but um, it does work and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how you might do it this way. So we're going to have a text that's going to be an NS mutable attributed string. And the string setup is going to basically be that I'm just going to put in spaces manually so that our, uh, our, our, our where, where the actual text starts is going to be slightly away from the button or slightly away from the image rather. So if I didn't put in any space, basically the text is going to creep up right on this image. And it is unfortunately hard to kind of uh, set up where that text would appear. So one workaround is that we can actually just put in, let's just put in three spaces for this. And now we're just going to put in our model's uh, title. So obviously here, just to explain what zip does, it's just going to combine the, the three models that I have here with the three buttons. And then I can use basically the first model with the first button. So anyway, we're going to put in the, the model title here, and then uh, I'm going to put in a new line, and then we're going to put in another three spaces, and then we're going to define some of these attributes. So the attributes that I have are for the font to be an NS font system font of a particular size. We're going to make it 12 or rather 13 for the titles. And then for the color, we're going to set the foreground color to be a Venice color label color. All right. Then from here, what we can do is we can append to the text. So we're going to append a new string. So it's going to be another attri NS attributed string. We want string with attributes. And so this one's just going to be the model's subtitle. And then uh, we can go ahead and just copy and paste these attributes that we had previously. So let me just delete these guys. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. The size in the subtitle is slightly smaller, which is going to be a size of 12, but the label color will stay the same. Um, I actually might not need the label color in this since the label color isn't going to be the same, so it should actually already match. I'll just try to go, go ahead and delete that to see if that works. All right, the next thing is to just set the text on the button. So button.attributed title will be set to this text. All right, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and run this to make sure that 
my assumption of this foreground color was right and everything else, uh, it was not correct. So I do actually have to set this. Let's go. And I guess the, the color that it's going to take is whatever that accent color was of the, the button. So let's go ahead and set that. There we go. We can see that uh, both of them were set up uh, to be correct there. Um, so anyway, that's what we have for uh, the, the font. I actually wanted to use the bold system font for this. So I was slightly off on what I was using there. And there we go. We can see that it looks a lot more similar to the Xcode welcome window now. So if I show the Xcode welcome window and I show our application, we can see that they actually look quite similar, right? Um, minus the, the image I forgot to change to match the different images over here. But uh, we can see that the images are on the left. I have the different fonts uh, and different text. And you'll note that if I click any of these, right, uh, it'll actually just highlight it no matter where I am. Uh, and I actually need to run this button further along the edge. But uh, regardless, we can click basically anywhere that the text is today and the, the, the button, the image, and it will highlight it. You'll note that the highlight is actually different. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how to get the different highlight to be dark, um, but the standard is lighter. So maybe there's an alternate image that we could use. But um, anyway, you kind of get the idea. It's fairly uh, close to what this implementation is over here. All right, um, let's just clean this up a little bit. Um, and there's also the last thing that we have to do, which is implement the mouse events, right? So we currently aren't hiding this button or this button. And so we still need to implement that. Uh, how do we set that up? Well, we want to be able to get a mouse entered event when we exit or enter the view. And so how are we gonna set that up? Uh, we are in a view controller, so that's a little weird, right? We're not in a, a view to set this up, but we can actually just add a, a, a tracking area directly onto the view ourselves. So we can just say view add tracking area and it's tracking area. And we'll just do the same thing that we did before. So the options we want are for the mouse entered and exit events. We want it active always. And then uh, we want it to be um, in the visible rect. And then the owner will be us because we want to receive the messages. And then user info will be nil. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and implement our mouse entered and exit events. So mouse entered. And on mouse entered, we simply want to say that the close button, uh, the alpha value is going to be one. And then we also want the show on launch checkbox to be an alpha value of one as well. And when we leave, so mouse exited, we want to have, um, what do we want to have here? We want to have the animation context, so NS animation context run animation group and context here all right so here what we want to do is we want to tell the context that it should allow implicit animation and then we simply want to tell them what to do so the close button we want the animator proxy and we want to set the alpha value to be a value of zero and same with the show on launch checkbox. We want the animator. We want to set the alpha value to be zero. And by default, there should be uh, some sort of, uh, I think it's 0.25 or something like that for the animation. So let's go ahead and check to make sure that that worked as well. So when we first appear, we can see that they're here. If I leave, they animate away. And when I appear or when I enter, they appear immediately. So uh, that's the setup that we have there. Anyway, uh, with that said, um, there's that's pretty much all we want to do in this tutorial. Um, uh, I'll make sure that the code actually uses the right image assets for uh, these individual parts. But that's pretty much all we want to do in this video, and that covers most of what uh, this functionality is on this side here, right? We can see that they look almost identical, uh, and we have very similar implementations for uh, both of them. If we want uh, the image buttons to spin to span the entire uh, width, all we need to do to change that is to specify that the, um, the basically we want the hugging priority to be uh, lower. So uh, let's go ahead and see if I can do that before the end of this video. So if I go into our section here and I want the uh, content hugging priority to be lowered. So if I lower it just by one to 249, you can see that the image will by default stretch all the, or the button rather will stretch all the way across. 
And that's really what we wanted to match the exact behavior of Xcode. So now that that hugging priority is below low, we can actually click over here and we can see that the, the button will highlight uh, depending on which row we're on. All right, and uh, so that's pretty much everything. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next video, we will talk about how we can handle the recents uh, on the, the, the right side. So how can we set up this table view over here on the right? Anyway, I'll see you guys in that video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.